Welcome everyone. Today we'll be covering everything online tournaments. If you're brand new to Smash GG, I recommend checking out our super quick getting started video. There we talk tournament basics, including tournament submission, registration settings, publishing your page, permissions, and more. So you're here for online tournaments. You've got your page submitted, you've let your people know what's happening, but now you actually need to run the tournament. We've got you covered. In this video, we'll be covering everything related to online tournaments, including the player experience and what your players see, uh, how you set up your tournament beforehand, setting up automatic round timers, seeding match dashboards, and assigning matches to a stream. Now obviously your player's experience is important, but it's important also because you need to know what players see to best understand how to help them. When on a tournament page, players can click the Manage tab on your event page to see their tournament dashboard. It's here that they can view everything, including their tournament schedule, upcoming tasks, stream settings, and everything they really need. By clicking on an upcoming match, a player can enter a match window, and inside this window they can do three things. Firstly, they can check into their game. Second, they can chat with their opponents inside the window to organize the match. And lastly, they can report and dispute scores as needed. At the bottom of their chat, a player can also request a moderator for help resolving any issues. That should cover what your players are seeing for the most part, so now that you have a solid understanding of that and their perspective, let's make sure that your tournament format is set up the way you want it to be. Head to the bracket setup page of your admin panel. You should have set up an event in tournament submission, so it should show up here with its one phase. Each tournament phase represents a different part of tournament play, so for example, if you have round robin play going into some elimination bracket, you're going to have a phase for each of those. Here, I kind of have a uh, round robin group stage going into a final top cut of double elimination bracket. So you might have been able to tell that we can edit these phases in a couple ways. You can edit them namely in five ways. Uh, you can edit its name. Uh, you can look at the kind of different formats we offer in Smash GG for tournament formats. We offer six currently. You can change the number of pools in a particular phase or change where the entrants are coming from. And lastly, you can edit how players may progress from this phase to another after completing it. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to where we have all of our entrants in. And in this example, we're going to run a double elimination pools phase into a double elimination top eight bracket phase. We have 32 entrants and we're setting it to four pools. If you set a number of pools, Smash G will automatically divide that 32 into eight or whatever number into evenly dividing them out. Be sure to create the format that you want that properly works with a number of players in your tournament. For more information, you can check out our help articles and guides for how to set up your tournament brackets. With formatting done, you can head over to the pools and seating page to rank players accordingly. Here you can see players in an event by simply dragging and dropping players to their appropriate place. You can do this with overall seeds, uh, or you can do this within a pool. There's a lot of options for how you proceed here, so uh, feel free to seed at your own leisure. Once done, save and head into the Stations and Streams page if your online tournament has a main stream. Otherwise, proceed to the Round Timer section of the video shortly ahead. Completely optional, but you can also assign matches to a stream queue, which does two things. It lets players know that they are being streamed while also giving you an easy to view schedule of upcoming stream matches. In Stations and Streams, simply hit Add Stream and plop in whatever official stream is set to broadcast your event. You might want to control the pace of streamed games. For example, you might block players from starting a match when the stream might not be ready. If so, edit your stream station and select Block Player Reporting. This means your staff will have to start the match and report matches, but gives them full control of it all. You can assign matches to your stream later once the tournament has started, and we'll go over that in the future. Until then, you should be ready to tinker with round timers in the brackets page. So round timers is the kind of most important part of your online tournament setup. In the brackets page, beyond visualizing your brackets, you can adjust round timers, which is essential. So you can do this by hitting the gear next to your tournament's first round to open round settings. 
In this window, there are three tabs with different functions in each and two check marks below. Those check marks will go over later, which help automatically adjust future round timers. So the times tab helps schedule when a round is to start and how long it takes for it to finish. The settings tab allows you to edit the games required to win a set and what the format of that is. And the timers tab helps you modify match timer options that will allow you to further automate your online tournament process. There's two timers here. The DQ timer sets the amount of time to allow a team or player to check in before actually disqualifying them. Let's say Jim has a round at 2 p.m. We're going to set and give Jim here five minutes before he is automatically DQ'd from this round. The verify timers below sets the time given to teams or players to sign off on a set's results. So this is after Jim has finished his, his game. This is after you know the last game's result has been input and a set has been complete. If a round was to take 15 minutes, it started at 2 p.m. and it is now 2.20. That means the minimum verify timer is going to go into play. We're only gonna give them two minutes to verify these scores. However, if they're ahead of schedule, let's say it took only 10 minutes to finish that round, then we're gonna go ahead and give Jim here the maximum verify timer, which is three minutes. So let's assume our tournament here begins at 2 p.m. So round one will begin at 2 p.m. as well. We'll set that in the round settings window here, and let's go ahead and assume each set, each round will take 15 minutes. So we can see here that by having the check marks selected in that window, all feature rounds here will adjust to these settings. 2 p.m. the first round, 2.15 the second round, etc. However, if playing in a double elimination bracket, you'll need to set up timers on the winners and losers side. So here we notice that losers round one requires matches A, B, C, and D to happen. Those are all matches in winners round one, which would finish by 2.15 p.m. So we can determine that this round, losers round one, should start at 2.15 p.m. You'll now see that all rounds in this pool have scheduled times as planned. However, if you go into a different pool, you'll notice that these times aren't here. That's because MassGG typically schedules rounds to happen in certain phases. In-person events typically have different waves because of a finite number of setups, but online tournaments don't have this problem. In other words, you simply need to assign all rounds in a phase to a single wave. You can do that by visiting the scheduling page and creating a wave for however long your phase should last. Afterwards, head to the pools and seating page from before, you'll notice the current display of no wave assigned. Hit the gear around any of the pools and simply assign them to the same wave that we just made. Now with the wave sorted out, head back to the brackets page and edit another pool. Edit round timer is the exact same way we did before, uh, and this time we should be able to notice changes that affect the entire wave's pools. So we'll set them here really quick, 215 minutes, in pool two and save. Now if we click off of it right now and click onto another pool, we can see that all of our changes here have been made as well. Of course, we'll have to edit the loser's bracket, but the point is made. Now that we have everything in the same wave, all of our updates should carry out throughout all pools. Now, of course, tournaments aren't all ideal, and oftentimes pools have an odd number of players like here. Uh, these create staggered tournament starts. That is to say, a start with a number of entrants that isn't a power of two. So in these situations, you can stack round times on top of each other at the same time. So I'll have this round one with one match here start at the same time as all the other matches. With round timers done, your bracket should be ready. Look out for any little mistakes, and when you're ready, hit the Start Bracket button on the top right. Players will not be able to play their matches or check in until you do so. The last bit is the Match Dashboard. The Match Dashboard is your ground zero for all tournament play. 
Here by default, you can see matches that have yet to start or are in progress. When a round time arrives, DQ timers start counting down as shown here. As a moderator, you can enter a match window and perform actions for players, helping them check in. Back on the match dashboard, you can see if there are any disputes reported from the matches window, enter their chat, and resolve it. Additionally, you can report a set scores or edit them as needed. A common issue is teams getting scores incorrect. For example, a best of three match is reported here as a 2-0 win when it was tied 1-1 in actuality. You can help by hitting the report tab, edit results, and reset their match. Lastly, you can assign any pending matches to your stream by highlighting a match and hitting the lightning bolt icon. Click it and click on your stream and hit save. With this, players in chat will know if they are on stream and allow your organizers to view a stream schedule in the stream queue page. Congratulations! You've seen it all and should now be able to handle what any match dashboard or online tournament throws at you. We have a couple more videos and articles that can help you run the best event on the net. Feel free to check those out in the description below. As always, reach out to your Smash UG support chat for any and all help, and we'll see you later.